Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another BSGS example. So in my last video I made a quick um, example over going over the baby step giant step algorithm and today we'll be doing another example just to, you know, really solidify um, the, that technique. So let's just jump right in. So this is our um, our problem for today. It's a little big, so I'm going to shrink it a bit. I think that's good. So today we have 5 to the x, which is congruent to 111 mod 167. So if you remember from last time, um, we had our general formula as g to the n is congruent to a mod p. And we want to be solving for this exponent right here. So in this case we want to solve for x. And we can go ahead and name our variables. So a in our case is 111, g is 5, and p is 167. So these are our variables, and we will be using this for our next calculations. So if you remember from, well, first of all, if you haven't seen the first video, I do recommend watching that so you can have a little more background as to what I'm doing here. But uh, as I recalled, as, as I did in the last video, we have five steps in total in the BSGS algorithm, and our first step this. Our first step, step one, is to set a variable m, which is a new variable that we'll call, that we'll set to d for x. And we can go ahead and name our variable. So a in our case is 111, g is 5, and p is 167. So these are our variables, and we will be using this for our next calculations. So if you remember from, well first of all, if you haven't seen the first video, I do recommend watching that so you can have a little more background as to what I'm doing here. But uh, as I recalled, as as I did in the last video, we have five steps in total in the BSGS algorithm. And our first step, where should I put this? Our first step, step one, is to set a variable m, which is a new variable that we'll call, that we'll set to the greatest integer of the square root of p. In, in our case, p is 167, right here. So we put 167 here. And if you go into a calculator and you do um, 167 square rooted, you get, one second, you get 12.9. So the greatest integer in this case is 13, since you want to round up to the greatest integer. So that is our m value. So now that we have our m value, we can go to step 2. So actually, let's write down our m value up here with all of our variables. We have m equals 13. And I'll get this out of the way. And we can do step 2. So now that we have our m value, we can go to step 2. Now step 2 is very straightforward. We just have to solve for g to the m j. Now we have our g value, which is 5, and we have our m value, which is 13. We don't have our j value. So our j value, as I said in my last video, is basically the index, or the amount of times we must solve 
um, for the for g to the mj, like the iterations essentially. And how do we figure out how many times we need we need to do this calculation? So we get that number from our m value actually. So m we we use m in our calculation, but m also tells us how many steps we need to take. So we need to take 13 steps. And j will represent that. This will be a little clearer if we go maybe I shouldn't do that. I should I should keep this up. So it'll be a little clearer when we do the um the calculations. So I'm going to put this up here up here so we know what we're dealing with. There. So let me go ahead and scroll down so we have a little more space for our calculations. So I've scrolled down here a bit so we have a little more room to do our calculations. So we want to start with j, our index, and g to the mj, which is the calculation we're looking for. So we want to do this j times, so 13 individual times starting from zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And all these add up to um, thirteen individual steps. So we have thirteen numbers here, which is what we want. And now we want to do g to the mj. So we have g equals five, m equals 13, j, which is here on the left side. And before we do the calculations for g to the mj, we want to note something really important, which is that g to the mj is equal to g to the mj mod 167, mod p, I mean, <laughs> mod p, where p is 167, according to our problem. This is important because this will give us a more um, informational answer and it will lead us to collisions that will uh, later in the problem give us our final answer. You'll see a little bit of that once we get into step three and four. So now we can do our first um, calculation, which is that for j equals zero. So we have g to the mj, which is 5 to the 13 times 0, which is equal to 5 to 13 times 0 mod 167, which is equal to 1, because 5 to 13 times 0 is 5 to 0, which is 1, this is 1, and 1 mod 167 is 1. So that is our answer for the first step. Now I'm going to do the rest of these calculations. Um, you can pause the video right here and calculate them yourselves because I think it'll be helpful to do it all yourselves. You have 12 more calculations to do. Um, I'll be right back with all the rest of the answers. So see you then. So these are our final g to the mj calculations. And we have 192, 114, 134, 137, 79, 87, 155, 65, 135, 62, 26, and 54. So these numbers don't look like they have any sort of um, correlation between them, but that's okay, that's fine, that's perfectly normal. What's important is that we will that we'll be looking for uh, similarities between this list and the next list that we'll be calculating in step two. So this list of numbers or this set we want to call L1. So we'll be comparing this list with another list L2, which we'll be solving in the next step. So let's go ahead and do the next step. Make sure to, that you keep your G to the MJ list handy because we'll be needing it to compare later.